In this video, we'll talk about adding two matrices together. We'll also talk about multiplying a matrix by a scalar, like the number five. The word scalar is just a fancy word for a number to distinguish it from, from multiplying by a matrix. In a future video, we'll talk about multiplying two matrices together, but not yet. Recall that a matrix is just an array of numbers, like this one. The dimensions of a matrix are the number of rows and the number of columns. For example, in this matrix above, we have two rows and three columns, so we say that this is a two by three matrix. The number of rows is always listed first. The elements of a matrix are just these individual entries. So this matrix has six elements. Sometimes these elements are indexed by their row number and column number. So for example, if I want the element A21, that would be the element in the second row and the first column, so that would be the number five. If instead I wanted the element A12, that would be the first row and the second column, so that would be the number zero. Sometimes you'll see a whole matrix listed out with this abstract notation. So A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23 is the correct ordering for the entries in this two by three matrix. The first index in these double indexes tells you the row number, so each of these numbers is in row one, and the second index tells you the column number. To add together two matrices of the same dimensions, so here dimensions two by three, we do just what you would think we would do. We add the corresponding elements together. So 1 plus 3 is 4, 0 plus negative 5 is negative 5, negative 4 plus 7 is 3, and similarly if we add corresponding elements in the bottom row, we get 6, 11, 2. To subtract two matrices of the same dimensions, we subtract elements. So here we get negative 2, 5, negative 11, 4, 7, and 0. Note that it's not possible to add or subtract matrices with different dimensions because we wouldn't be able to line up corresponding elements. To multiply a matrix by a scalar, it's just a number, we again do just what you'd think we do. We multiply each element by that number. So here we're multiplying three by this matrix. That just means we get three times one, which is three. Three times zero is zero. Three times negative four is negative 12. And similarly, we get these numbers on the bottom row. It's most typical to write scalar multiplication with the scalar on the left side. But it's also possible to write the scalar multiplication with the scalar on the right side, and it means the same thing. One last point is that instead of writing subtraction of matrices, it's also possible to write it as addition together with scalar multiplication by negative one. I'd like to go through some properties of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. But before I do that, I want to review some properties of just addition and multiplication of numbers. So we say that addition is associative. What this means is if you have numbers like, say, 3 plus 4, and you add those together and add another number like 7, that's the same thing as 3 plus 4 plus 7. You can group these in other orders. And, and more generally, if you have A plus B grouped plus C, that's the same thing as adding A to the grouping B plus C. That's the associative property. Addition is commutative. That means it doesn't matter what order you add things in. A plus B is always the same as B plus A. There's something called an additive identity. We usually just call it the number zero. 
the key property of number zero with addition is that if you add zero to any number, you just get the same number you started with. We have this property called the distributive property. Multiplication distributes over addition. So if you have four times three plus five, that's the same thing as four times three plus four times five. And that's true no matter what numbers A, B, and C you stick in the places of four, three, and five. When you multiply any number by zero, you just get zero. Multiplication is also associative. A times B times C is the same thing as doing A times B first and then multiplying that answer by C. And multiplication is commutative. A times B is the same as B times A. Well, guess what? These same properties hold for matrix addition and scalar multiplication. If you add matrices together, it doesn't matter if you first add the two matrices A plus B and then add that result to C, get the same thing if you group it the other way. And this follows really from the associative property for addition of numbers. Because when we're adding matrices, we're just adding numbers in each position of the matrix. Same thing for commutativity. You can add matrices in either direction and you'll get the same answer, just because you can add numbers in either direction and you'll get the same answer. Now what about this additive identity? Is there such a thing as a zero matrix? that you can add on to any other matrix and just get the same matrix. I'll, I'll write the zero with little brackets around it to emphasize that it's supposed to be a matrix, not the, not the scalar number zero. See if you could guess what that matrix would look like. If you're guessing that it would have all entries zero, you're exactly right. Because when you add zero to every single element of a matrix, you're just gonna get the same matrix again. Notice that to be precise, there's actually a lot of different zero matrices. One for every possible pair of dimensions, m by n. Just like for regular multiplication and addition of numbers, scalar multiplication over matrices is distributive. So if I have a scalar k and I multiply it by the sum of two matrices a and b, I could instead first multiply the first matrix by k and then multiply the second matrix by k and then add them up. Multiplication by the scalar zero is just gonna multiply every single entry of my matrix by zero, so that's gonna give me a zero matrix. Scalar multiplication is associative in the sense that if you have like k times l and you multiply that by a matrix A, that's the same thing as K times LA. And scalar multiplication is commutative in the sense that K times A is the same thing as A times K, pretty much by definition. So all of the properties that we've mentioned about regular addition and multiplication work for matrix addition and scalar multiplication with matrices. But we'll see in a future video when we talk about matrix multiplication that there are actually some surprises with matrix multiplication and not all these properties will hold. Let's end with an example, finding 5A minus B, where A is this three by three matrix and B is that three by three matrix. In other words, I wanna take five times this matrix and then subtract that matrix. So to do five times this matrix, I'm just gonna multiply all the entries by five. Then I'll subtract this other matrix. So I'll just subtract entries and I get two minus 20, minus four, minus four, 25, minus 13, nine, zero, and minus two as my final answer. In this video, we added matrices together, element by element, did scalar multiplication by multiplying each element by that scalar, and we talked about some of the properties.